Hey you guys, welcome to another YouTube Reformer workout. It has been a minute for this time, I mean it for real. It's been a minute. We moved and, and, and I'm back. I know it took a little while, I'm sorry. We're still not all moved in, everything has been a, but this room was my first priority. So it is not complete, but we're getting there. We're getting there, right? So no wasting no more time. Let's get down to business, okay? Today's workout should be about 45 minutes, okay? We're looking at a full body workout. However, you're gonna get really nice focus on the upper body. A lot of similar movement patterns through the biceps and through the back, okay? So you're gonna get some of that. Um, we're gonna be standing only on the floor, so balance is not a big issue today. So if you are concerned about balance, don't worry about that today. Coordination is gonna play a small role today, but it's not gonna be extreme. Um, so you won't need that patience necessarily as much as we've needed it in the past. Uh, this is about a level two, three. Okay, so we're not going advanced. This isn't one of my level four fives, and it isn't beginner either. But if you are a beginner, this would be a really nice step up for you, okay? So beginner, intermediate is where I'd kind of place this workout today. The only props you're gonna need for today are your jump board. Okay, so you want that up and it's gonna stay up so you don't have to worry about removing it throughout the workout. You're gonna put it up and keep it up. Okay, so have that locked into place nice and sturdy. Make sure it's nice and tight. I've got one extra light spring on my reformer since I'm on a balanced body reformer that is a yellow for me. It may be a different color for you. Just make sure it is your lightest spring, okay? And then I am using weights in the form of a ball today. So these are two pound ball weights. If you have weights that are in the shape of a circle, that would be nice today. If you don't, you can use dumbbells as well. That's absolutely fine. I would stay in the general range of one to five pounds. Five is gonna be pretty aggressive, so I definitely wouldn't go above five, okay? These are two pound weights today. Um, so that's what I have. We're gonna start with them right away. Your headrest is down, and it's gonna stay that way. We are gonna use the long and short loops today, or at least I want you to have the option of both. So if you do have two different, two different length straps, have them on there ready to go. And that's it. That's all you need and yourself, okay? So here we go, let's get started right away. We're gonna start with a warm up on the floor, actually. So grab your weights, whatever you're using, whether it be dumbbells, weight, you know, ball weights, whatever you have, okay? Now, you wanna stand so your feet are hip width apart, all right? All 10 toes are flat on the floor. We're standing up perfectly straight, and I want you to go ahead and take your arms and bring them out off the chest, palms up, okay? So my wrist is at my underarm height, and I'm gonna broaden my collarbone, roll my shoulders down my back, and I'm gonna make sure that my knees are not locked, okay? I want them to be soft, not bent necessarily, but not locked into the joint where I'm extra gripping through my quads and my glutes, okay? Relax everything. I want you, though, to engage through the abdominal wall. So pulling that belly button up and back between your shoulder blades, holding that there again, broadening that collarbone. We're gonna start with a bicep curl. So on your exhale, you're gonna bend at the elbows to a 90 degree bend. I don't want you to bring the weight to your shoulder, okay? 90 degree bend, hold that. And then we're gonna open up those elbows to a chest fly. My elbows, stay in front of my side seam, okay? So I don't want you to pull them behind you. We're not closing our shoulder blades, okay? I want you to just find that distance where the elbows are in your peripheral vision. Bring them forward, open up your bicep curl, that's it. Engage the core, bicep curl, chest fly, back, and open, okay? So right here, this is where we're starting. Think about that mobility through the back body, good. Holding those elbows at underarm height the entire time. Forward, open. I wanna think about, as I hold on to these weights, is my wrist straight? Okay, I wanna make sure that that line from my wrist to my elbow is nice and straight, and that I'm not arching through the wrist. Okay, open that bicep curl. Curl, engage the core, open, narrow, and open the bicep curl. Two more, curl, open, close, and open that bicep curl, last one. Curl, 
Open your chest fly and stay right here. Now, we're gonna get into the lower half a little bit. We're gonna sink into a squat. So I want you to reach your sitting bones back and as you do that, the torso will tilt and you're gonna press those weights up and overhead. Now, I'm not pressing them together, I'm just lengthening those arms out. My biceps are framing my ears. I still have all 10 toes on the floor and my ribs are stacked over my hips but notice how I let the torso tilt. I wanna get into the back line of the body a little bit, so I feel my glutes broaden. I'm gonna rise all the way back up to that chest fly position or that field goal. Hold that and let's do it again. Reach your sitting bones back. Feel the glute broaden right there. Those sitting bones get further apart. Those arms are extended overhead and then we inhale as we rise back up. Exhale. Pressing those weights up and overhead, sit into your squat. Notice my booty is above knee height so that my core can remain a big part of this movement, right? Exhale, reach the sitting bones back and press. Inhale, rise back up. Now remember, every piece of this, we move with intention, okay? So I'm sweating already just all this extra focus on what's happening in the body. Right, exhale, reach back with those sitting bones. Don't grip through the toes. Keep those toes relaxed. Inhale, rise up. Don't let those elbows drop. Exhale, sit back and up. You've got two more. Reaching those weights up and overhead, sink into that squat. My eyes are about three feet in front of my feet, three feet in front of my toes. And back, last one. You're gonna hold this one. Find your squat. Make sure those kneecaps are behind your toes because you're reaching your sitting bones so far back. Your kneecap tracks with big toe. Second toe, hold this. And now you're gonna drop your arms to a T. Palms down. My wrist is still at underarm height. Relax the shoulders. And I want you to pulse your squat one inch up and down. Narrowing through those sitting bones as you lift broadening as you lower. It's tiny and focus. I want you to think only about those sitting bones. Draw your belly button up and in for eight, seven, six, five, four. We're gonna come to the carriage in three, in two, and come all the way up. Whew. Okay, I'm warm, I'm, I'm definitely warm. All right, set your weights down on the floor. You're gonna come onto your carriage on your knees. All right, so you want your kneecaps to hang off the front edge of the carriage for this one. Now I know sometimes that can make you feel nervous or unstable. I promise I got you. You don't wanna put extra pressure on that kneecap, okay? So we're gonna do some upper body jumps. So my kneecap, just off that front edge. Remember, you are on your lightest spring. Extra light if you have it, please. Hands are gonna come to your jump board, okay? My hands are about shoulder width apart. All 10 fingers point up. Roll your shoulders down your back. Broaden your collarbone on your inhale. I just want you to press out one time and hold. And come onto your fingertips. So you're fully lengthening through the arm. Everything's extended. And I want you to make sure you're not sitting on your heels, that you're actively hovering over them. All right, so we're gonna think about the inner thighs engaging to hold the hover. Belly button drawn up and in, and those ribs are stacked over the hips. Okay, here we go. We're gonna bend at the elbow, full hand imprints the jump board, and then we inhale as we roll and leave the jump board. Exhale, land. Inhale, leave. Exhale, land. So I'm rolling through the palm of the hand, just like I would if they were my feet, right? So I land fingertip all the way to the heel, Leave the heel of the hand out through the fingertip. I'm not hiking those shoulders up by my ears. I have them relaxed. I want you to think about the shoulder blades wrapping the rib cage. Inhale, exhale as you land. You're still hovering. So I know you feel your quads, right? But to take it out of the quads, I want you to think a little bit more about your inner thighs and your pelvic floor narrowing. All right, we're here for four. Inhale. Exhale, we're gonna add a rise up in three, and land, last two. Notice I'm not crashing into my bumper, 
right? You want to catch yourself and absorb that landing. Last one like this. Now, when you rise, your arms are going to come alongside the body, open up the front of the hip, and land. Open and land. Good. You come back to that hover. Engaging your core is going to hold you steady in that lifted position, right? Those arms come right alongside the side seam. Excellent. Inhale, rise, looking straight ahead. Exhale, land. Rise and land. Now, I don't want you to think about gripping your butt when you lift. I'd rather you think about lifting those inner thighs up along the spine, right? Those suspender straps we always talk about. You're here. For six, we're going to add a little bit. In five, good. Last four. And sometimes upper body jumps take a second to really get the hang of them. Take your time. Take your time. We don't have, we're not rushing. We're not, we're not rushing here. Good. On your next one, you're going to rise, but this time your right arm is going to go up and your left arm down and land. Switch. Left arm up, right arm down. So you're making a V with each arm, but it's an oppositional V. Right arm up, left arm down. So it's a big diagonal line. I'm still looking straight ahead. And I'm still opening the full front of the hips. Exhale, land. Inhale. Exhale, land. Good. Now we're going to add a little twist to this. So the next time your right arm goes up, you're going to twist to the left and back down. Left arm up, twist to the right. You're twisting towards your lower arm. Don't want you to twist your hips. I want you to twist waistline up. All right, so it's less. Less is more here. Less is more. Let your eyes help deliver that twist. Good. Six, and land. Five, and land. Last four. This is it. Last three. Fully opening that seat crease. Two, and last one and come all the way in. All right, you guys, turn to your right. Turn to your right. We're going to sit crisscross applesauce. I have kids. <laughs> I have kids. That's why we say crisscross applesauce in here. Grab actually only one of your weights is all you need. We're going to stay on the extra light spring. Scoot yourself all the way to the edge of your carriage. So what I'm going to ask you for, because we want a really deep bend of the elbow, you want to get your sitting bone center of the glute, right, that bony landmark, right at the edge of your carriage, okay? Almost so half of your butt cheek is off the carriage and half of it is on. That's your left butt cheek, okay? Now, I've got myself crisscrossed. Left hand is going to come to the jump board, and I'm going to lengthen that left arm all the way out, palm flat. Now, this is very important for safety and bone rhythm. Make sure your left hand is in front of your shoulder, not in line with your shoulder in front, okay? My fingertips are at a 45, all right? Now my right arm is gonna hold this weighted ball out in a T, palm down, all right? Watch that wrist, try to make it nice and long. On your exhale, sitting nice and tall, right on the tips of your sitting bones, you're gonna soften that left elbow, and on your inhale, you're gonna jump. Good, all right, so the key with single arm jumps side facing like this, is that we don't make it a full body movement, right? I don't want you to shove off your jump board. What I want you to do is hold that tall posture, right? So let's make it as controlled with li limited minimal movement through the torso, right? I don't want you to move that torso. I want you to sit nice and tall and hold that as you leave and as you land and absorb that landing with that left arm. You're going to feel these a lot faster through the upper body. Good. Exhale, bend. Inhale, leave. Last one. All right, now I want you to keep jumping, but turn that right palm up. That right palm, you're going to do a bicep curl as you leave. So on this one, I'm going to leave bicep curl 90-90. Open it up as I land. Curl and land. So this is coordination right here. It's not aggressive. I've got a two-pound weight, right? My bicep can handle a lot more than that. But we've got a lot to think about, right? Is that core engaged? Did we start moving the torso? Are we shoving off the jump board? 
Let's not do those things, okay? It's an inhale out, exhale land. Good. Now on your next one, you're going to hold your bicep curl. Hold it. Now as you leave, you're going to take that bicep curl forward, open, and land. Forward, open, and land. So I'm holding the 90-degree bend in my elbow now. I'm just bringing that elbow in front of my shoulder and then out to the side, in front and lateral. Good. Holding it there. Try not to shove off that jump board. I know it's getting a lot harder on that left up. Left arm is getting tired. Four. Good. Last three. Last two. It's an inhale out. Exhale, land. Last one. Let that breath help you. On your next one, you're going to stay in. Extend that arm all the way out and bring your bicep curl right in front of the shoulder. And I want you to pulse that bicep curl up. Eight. Seven, and I want you to think about the lift coming from the back body. The shoulder blade moves down the back, down the ribs as you lift. For four, for three, for two, and bring it all the way in. All right, you're gonna turn and face your jump board now on your hands and knees. You still only need one weight, and we're not changing our springs. Stay right where you're at. Now, I'm gonna come into a quadruped position, so a four-point kneel. My legs are going to frame my right shoulder block. Okay, so I've got my right shin on the outside of the block and my left shin over the headrest. My left hand is going to come to the front edge of the carriage. Now, my right hand, I want this weight, but I want you to grab your strap first. All right, so go ahead and grab your short loop. Now, you have an option here. If it feels too aggressive, you can go to the long loop. And if it still feels too aggressive, you're going to drop your weight. But let's get set up first. Put that weight in your right hand, dumbbell or ball, whatever you have. Now, left hand wraps that front edge of the carriage. Broaden your collarbone, and I want you to bring that right arm up alongside your side seam. Okay, so it's long and extended behind you. Palm down. On your exhale, keeping your shoulder girdle level, right shoulder at the same height as your left, you're going to bicep curl on the right. Inhale, open that bicep curl. All right, now before we do anything else, you're going to be here for a minute because I want you to feel this in the body. You've got equal pressure between your right shin and your left palm, okay, your left heel of the hand. All right, so I want you to stay level here. Belly button's pulled up and in so we're not collapsing or shortening the low back, right? We want a nice tabletop here back there, nice flat back. Collarbone is broad. That left shoulder is away from my ear. Good. A full extension of your elbow every time. Now on these bicep curls, I'd like you to bring that weight to your shoulder and then open from there. And there's no whipping of the strap. This is all very controlled. My ribs wrap. My belly button's pulled up and in. Good. We're here for four more. Exhale, curl. Inhale, release. Now, I am going to add a little bit of a balance challenge here. All right? But we're going to go really slow with it, and you stay right here if you don't feel comfortable. Okay? On your next one, you're going to hold your bicep curl. Hold it. Now, keeping equal pressure between your right shin and your left hand, you're going to extend your left leg out and back, right off the hip, point that toe, okay? So now you're in a full bird dog. If you feel comfortable, you're going to open up your bicep curl. So slowly, on your inhale, open up that right bicep curl, hold it, and then on your exhale, you're going to slowly draw it back into a bicep curl. Inhale, open. This is slow, or your momentum is going to throw you off balance. All right, my eyes are directly at the springs. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Now, is your right shoulder dropping? Keep that right shoulder at the same height as the left shoulder. And keep that leg lengthened right off the hip. Point that toe, because we want to think about that left inner thigh leaving the big toe. Good, guys, excellent. You're here for four more. Exhale, curl. Inhale, release. Last three. Curl and release. You've got two more. Curl 
and open. This is your last one. And you're going to hold your bicep curl. And now your left leg is going to lower, tap the headrest, and lift. Lower and lift with your core. Notice it's not a high kick. I'm simply lowering and lifting the leg right to the same height as it was held at, right, right off the hip. Lower and lift. Good. For four and lift. Last three and lift. Can we put a little more focus on the core control here? Good. Last one and lift. And put that left knee down and open up your bicep curl, guys. Come on, away. Whoo! Okay, we're going to sit. Sitting on your left hip, so I'm turning to the right. Hang up your strap for just a moment. Just a quick moment because we're going to need it again. Your left, we're going to sit in mermaid. Left leg is going to be in front and your right leg is going to be hooked in back. So that means, excuse me, your right shin is going to be up against your shoulder blocks. Okay, so I want you to get situated there. Still not changing your springs. Your right hand is going to grab your short loop. Again, same options on the last exercise. If you need the long loop, take it. If you need to drop your weight, drop your weight. Okay, those are your modifications to lighten the load a bit. Now you want to make sure that your front leg has a little bit of room on the carriage, about two inches, because we're going to lift. Okay, so give yourself a little space in the front. Okay, so you're going to scoot back a little bit. And now that ball or dumbbell is going to come in your right hand. That right arm is going to be in a deep W right by your side. Left hand, left heel of the hand is going to be right at the edge of your carriage. Okay, so we're going to get situated right here, sitting nice and tall on that left sitting bone, thinking about sternum over pubic bone, ribs are wrapping, belly buttons pulled up and back. Okay, relax your shoulders. On your inhale, you're going to lift up onto your left shin, and you're going to use the heel of your hand. So inhale, you're going to lift up and reach that right arm up and over the right ear, and I'm looking at my springs as I open up my right hip. Right? I'm sending my right hip forward. That keeps the heel of my hand light, so I'm not using that for weight. Okay? And then I come all the way back down to that deep W and that left sitting bone on the carriage. Okay? Inhale. Not putting too much weight in my left hand. I lift onto my shins, right? And I reach that right arm up and overhead. Exhale, lower. Okay, so you want to think a little bit more about the weight in the lower half. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And I want you to be able to get that right arm to full extension when it reaches overhead. If you are not hitting full extension, then I need you to either take your long loop or drop your weight. Okay? Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower. You've got four more of those. Nice and controlled. Inhale, we lift, opening up that front seat crease. Exhale, we lower with control. Good, drawing that belly button up and in. Three more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. We're going to be holding that lift in two. Inhale, lift and reach. Exhale, lower. Last one. You're going to hold this one lifted. And now right here, you're going to exhale as you bend your right elbow into that deep W again and inhale, press the elbow. Good. You're staying in your lift. You are light on your right shin and your left hand. Good. Hold it right here. Length out of the waistline for four and bend. Inhale, press for three and bend. Last two. And bend, I'm looking at my springs. Last one. And bend. And have a seat. Oh boy, it's sweaty in here today. Okay, hang up your strap. We're gonna stand up on the floor. So step off right in front of you. So you're on that right side of your machine. You're gonna only still need one weight. So if the other weight is in your way, get it out of your way. You're gonna do scooter here. So we're gonna hook on one more spring. Add a blue to your yellow. Okay, now again, your spring colors may be different. I now have an extra light and a light to medium spring on. So two springs, two springs. All right, your right foot's gonna stay on the floor and your left shin is gonna be on the carriage. Now your foot, left foot is gonna come up against your shoulder block. Okay, right hand has your dumbbell or your ball. 
all right? And your left hand's gonna go on your hip. Now I want you to stand up on your right leg. So my left knee is hovering over my carriage right now. Depending on the height of your machine, that might be more of a hover, and that's okay. Stand up on that right leg. Now from here, my right knee is gonna bend slightly, and I'm gonna allow, as it bends, I'm gonna allow my torso to tilt. So I come into a shallow lunge, sitting into my right hip. Notice my torso is tilted. Remember that from the beginning exercise we did, right? Ribs align with hips. Very, very important. Find that hinge, get into the glute here. I want you to feel that right butt cheek. Okay, your right hand has the weight, and we're gonna take that right arm and we're gonna lengthen it out behind us, okay? And you want your palm facing the floor with the weight. Open your er, uh, collarbone, spread your collarbone wide, and here we go. We're gonna send that left leg straight out on an inhale, bicep curl your weight. Exhale, bring it back slow. Curl and extend and bring it back slow. Now, scooter is a little bit more of a dynamic movement, right? You're going out fast and coming in slow. So if you need to adjust your spring load, if your spring load is so heavy that you can't hold your shallow lunge on the right standing leg, then change it to a lighter spring load, okay? You might wanna drop the extra light. You may wanna go to one red. That's slightly lighter than a blue and a yellow, okay? Extend, and I'm sorry, I'm off. You're, when you're extend, extended, you're in your bicep curl. When you bend, your arm is back. Extend and bicep curl, bend and back. Good, four more. Bicep curl and back. Last three. Bicep curl and back. Don't let the position of your ribs and your hips change. Okay, keep that nice and locked. Whew. Bicep curl. Now on your next one, you're gonna do your last bicep curl and you're gonna come in. Now, your right arm is gonna come into a deep W. You're gonna take that left leg and you're gonna press it back as you press the weight overhead and bring it in. Press and extend overhead and bring it in. What's your right leg doing? Mine's shaking. <laughs> Mine's shaking. Good, hang on guys, you got three more. Press and extend and bring it back, last two, woo! Press, and bring it back slow, this is your last one. Press, and bring it back slow, and come all the way up. Oh, that was a trembly one on that right leg. All right guys, grab both weights, you're gonna have a seat. Stay with two springs. So if you did change your spring load right now, you might wanna put two springs back on, just for stability, okay? But. Whatever you were on for scooter should be fine. All right, we're gonna, actually we're gonna turn rear facing. So you're gonna face the back of your machine, feet on your headrest. Okay, so you're gonna lengthen those heels out so they're right at the top of the headrest and you're gonna sit really tall on your sitting bones. Now I want you to make sure that you have some space behind you because we're gonna hit teaser. All right, so I have about six inches behind my tailbone. Sitting tall on your sitting bones means sternum over pubic bone. We've got a nice posture, right? Crown of the head lifting away from the tailbone. My arms, I'm gonna take those weights right off the chest, palms up, okay? Now, from here, we're gonna find that roll or that hinge in that roll. So we're gonna start with the flat back hinge. No scooping of the tailbone yet. I want you to imagine a dowel running right through the crown of your head and out your tailbone. You're gonna hinge on that dowel so the back or the spine cannot change shape. We're gonna lean back two inches. So now you feel like you're off your sitting bones, right? That's where you should be, right off the sitting bones. Now from here, we're gonna scoop the tailbone. So you're gonna allow the gear wheels of the pelvis to turn back so the tailbone scoops under you and you have a slight roll through your lumbar spine and you approach that mid back. Stay right there, all right? So we're light on our heels. I'm gonna take my right leg and I'm gonna draw it up towards the chest and then I'm gonna put it back down. My left leg, drawing that left thigh towards the chest allows that femur, femur to sink into the hip a little deeper at the top of the thigh bone. Good, exhale, lift, inhale, lower. 
Exhale, left leg. Inhale, lower. So you're alternating legs. We're going to add the arms. Okay, one more time with that left leg. Relax your shoulders. Hold your roll here. On the next one, when you lift your right knee towards your chest, your left arm is going to do a bicep curl. So opposite leg, opposite arm. And extend back down. Right arm, left leg, bicep curl and lift. And lower. Right leg. So I want you to think about the psoas that runs along the spine, deep, deep core, right? That's what's attached to the femur at the top of our thigh. So that psoas is in charge of lifting your leg. And I want you to think about that muscle picking up the leg. All right, so we're getting deep into that core. Right knee, left arm. Those elbows are at underarm height. Right arm, left. Good. Okay, on your next one, you're going to hold your right knee in and your left arm bent hold. Let's invite the left leg and the right arm to join the party. Okay, zip up your inner thighs here. So both arms are in a bicep curl. Both legs are in a bent teaser. Collarbone is broad. Hold it here for four. For three, we're going to extend it all. Only if you feel comfortable, you're going to take that right leg and extend it all the way out nice and long. Left leg is going to join the right leg. Hold it. Can you extend your right arm palm down? Left arm palm down. Hold it. My arms are parallel to my legs. And I'm holding and lengthening for six. And everything is shaking. <laughs> for five. For four. Last three. And two. And lower it all the way down, guys. Woo! When the shake comes on. It is no joke. Step off to your right so you're on the other side of your machine. Okay, we're going to do that scooter on the other side. So left foot on the floor, you only need one weight in your left hand and your right shin and foot up against that shoulder block. Okay, now make sure your springs are what they were on when you were on the other side. So I have an extra light and a blue, a light to medium and an extra light, two springs. Make sure your knees are tracking with one another so they're in the same line. I'm going to soften. So right hand at the hip. I'm going to soften my left knee. And as I do that, I'm going to let my torso tilt so that I sink back into my left sitting bone, that standing leg. I want you to feel the glute turn on. Okay? And you've got that shallow lunge and that tilt going on. Take that left arm and reach it up and back, palm forward. Okay. Now, from here. Collarbone is broad. We're not twisting. We're going to bicep curl and press. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, out. Exhale, back. So I'm bringing that weight all the way up towards my shoulder. My left leg is my stable and isometric leg. So I don't want you to let that change position. That left knee should be in front of your ankle but behind your toes. And it's in a soft bend. It's not moving. The left kneecap tracks with my big toe, second toe. So take a look for that. Keep it there. Good. And my hips. I send that right hip forward. Even though I'm extending that right leg back, keep pressing that hip forward so your hips stay level. Right? Bicep curl and press. And bend slow. Bicep curl and press. Bend slow. Keep drawing that belly button up and in, keeping that low back nice and long. Good. And bend it back in four more. Bicep curl and press. Bring it in slow. Try to relax your left toes. Bicep curl and press. Two more. Bicep curl and press. Good. Last one like this. We're going to change what the arm is doing. Bring your left arm into a deep W. Palm forward, elbow bent. You're going to extend your right leg and press overhead. Bicep hugs the ear. And then we come back. Don't let anything change with your hips or that left knee, right? We're holding it stable with the core. The pelvis is stable because of the core. Inhale, press and extend and bring it back. Where is your weight distribution through your left foot? Can we make it a little more solid through the heel so that you're not loading the ball of your foot? Press and bring it back. Good. Control. Slow in. Four more. Press 
and bring it back slow. Last three, press and bring it back slow. Last two, press and bring it back slow. This is your last one, press and bring it back slow and come all the way up. Oh, oh boy, I'm glad that one's over. Okay, keep your weight. Have a seat facing the other direction. We're gonna be in mermaid. So your right leg is in front, your left leg is hooked in back. Scoot back on your carriage so that your sitting bone is pretty close to the back edge and you have room in front of you to lift. Okay, your left shin is up against those shoulder blocks. Change your spring load. You're gonna take off that blue so you're back to your extra light spring only. Your left hand grabs the short loop. If you had your long loop on the other side, that's fine. Use the same weight you had before, okay? Weight's gonna go in your left hand along with that loop. Right hand, heel, or, uh, heel of the hand by the springs on the edge of the carriage. That left arm is in a deep W. Let's sit up really tall on that right sitting bone, okay? Sternum over pubic bone, tailbone out of, or sorry, crown of the head out of the tailbone. There we go. On your inhale, you're gonna lift up onto your right shin and left shin and press that left arm up and over your bicep. I'm looking at the springs and then I'm gonna lower back down looking straight forward and sitting on my right hip. Inhale, press up and over, lift and exhale, lower. Now, I want you to think about your momentum, right? There is no momentum lifting you. I want you to think about control when you press and lift. Inhale, smoothly lifting. That arm hits full extension. If you are not hitting full extension, you need to change your loop to the long loop or possibly drop your weight. Inhale, press. Exhale, lower. We want to keep the weight on the heel of our hand light. Okay, and lower. Nice control right here. You've got four more. Inhale, press. Open up the front of your left hip. Exhale, lower. Last three. Inhale, press and lift. Exhale, lower. Two more. Inhale, reach. Lengthening out of that left waistline. And lower, you've got one more. We're gonna hold this one. You're gonna press and lift and hold. And now that left elbow bends and presses. Now, can you get a little lighter on the right hand? Good, make sure that right elbow is not locked out, holding you up there. Good, hang on, press and bend. You've got four more, press and bend. Last three, press and bend, feel the length out of that left waistline. You've got one more. Bend, inhale, press, and lower all the way down. Whew. Okay, hang up that strap for just a minute. We're gonna turn into that four-point kneel. So you're turning to face your jump board now. Your shins are going to surround your left shoulder block. Okay, so right shin and foot are over the headrest. My left shin is on the outside of the frame, or outside of the carriage edge. Now, keep your weight with you. You're gonna grab your short loop behind you again. Now remember, if you had your long loop over here, do the same thing. I want you to repeat on the other side. A ball is gonna go in my left hand with my short loop. Left hand, short loop, okay? But if you had your long loop, you make that, you make that decision, okay? Now I want you to make sure that you're in a four-point kneel obviously minus your left hand, <laughs> but your right wrist is under your shoulder and your knees are under your hips, not under your belly button, okay? Your left arm is gonna lengthen up and back right alongside your side seam. The ball or the weight, palm down, okay? Now from here, we're gonna take that bicep curl. Equalize your weight. Equal weight between my right hand and my left shin. You're gonna exhale as you bicep curl Inhale as you open it up. Now you're taking that weight all the way to the shoulder. Inhale, open. Good, can you feel the weight between your right hand and your left shin? Your right shin should be light, okay? Curl, inhale, open. The belly button, we're engaged through the core, right? We're not dumping through the midsection. 
We're keeping the low back nice and long. We don't, if you dump through the tummy, right, you're going to shorten your low back, and that's just going to put undue pressure and stress right there. So we don't want to do that, not at all. Open and bend. Good job right here, guys. Four more. Inhale as you open the elbow. Exhale as you curl. Inhale. Last three. Good, you've got two more, and then we're gonna go for that balance challenge on this one. You're gonna do the same thing you did on the other side. Now, you gotta remember, we are not symmetrical human beings. So, if one side feels different, that is not abnormal. You're gonna hold your next bicep curl, hold it, okay? Now, you're gonna take that right leg, and you're gonna slowly lift it, and extend that right leg right off the hip, point that toe. Okay, so my foot is the same height as my hip. Hold it right there. Again, we're lengthening the low back, not shortening it by taking the leg higher. Keep the leg at hip height. You're going to open up your bicep curl slowly. And then you're going to curl just as slow. Okay? Inhale, open your bicep curl. Keep that elbow lifted. Your elbow is right by your hip. Good. Open, inhale. Exhale, curl. Excellent. Any sort of whipping of the strap or momentum is going to throw you off. It's going to throw you off balance. So I want you to really think about control here. Slow it all down. You've got four more. Exhale, curl. If you're finding tension in the shoulder, try to relax that. Spread the collarbone wide. Good. Remember those shoulder blades, they wrap your rib cage. You've got two more. Inhale. Exhale, bicep curl. On your next bicep curl, you're going to hold it. Okay, hold your bicep curl strong. Engage that core. You're going to lower your right leg, tap the headrest, and lift back to hip height. Lower, inhale, lift. Notice my right hip doesn't get to dip. My right hip stays the same height as my left hip as I isolate that lift and lower to the femur in the hip socket. Right? Feel that swivel up and down. Good. Lower and lift. What's your right elbow doing? Is it locked out? Try to soften it. Make it an active joint. You're here for four and lower. Last three and lower. You've got two and lower. It's your last one. Lift and lower and pull that right knee back under the hip and come all the way in slowly. Whew. Okay, hang up your strap. We are on to that upper body jump other side. Okay, so you're going to sit crisscross applesauce with the weight in your left hand. You are still on your extra light spring. Now that you have a back view, it's good for this move to actually have a back view of me. You want your sitting bone, your right sitting bone, right at the very edge of the carriage. So half of my right butt cheek is off and half of it is on. Now, Ball, or ball or weight in the left hand. Your right hand is coming to the jump board, and I want you to extend that right arm all the way out with the hand and the wrist in front of the shoulder. This is so, so important, so please, not in line, in front. We're going to protect the elbow and protect the shoulder, okay? So right arm in front. You've got your fingers at a slight diagonal, okay, and your left arm is out in a T, palm down. Okay, find your tall posture, shoulders down your back, belly button up and in, broaden your collarbone, we're sitting tall. Exhale, bend that right elbow. Inhale, send yourself away. Now, if jumping right away is too much, if you find it hard to hold your composure through the torso, right, to stay tall, then just start with a roll through the hand. You roll to the finger and roll back down to the, palm, the heel of the hand bending the elbow, right? But if you feel like you've got enough composure to give yourself that little flick right through the fingertips, go for it, okay? You want to find that deep bend through the elbow, full engagement of that right arm with core controlling our stability. Good. Bend and extend. Exhale. Inhale as you leave. Where's your, right, or your left hand? Is it the same height as your underarm? That's where we want it to be. Hold it right there. Okay, relax your shoulders. Inhale, exhale. Last three. And then we're going to turn that left arm into a bicep curl. Last two. 
and one. Now right here, keep jumping. Turn that left hand up and bicep curl and land. Bicep curl and land. Now this is a controlled bicep curl. You're hitting that 90 degree bend through the elbow. Now I can see my elbow in my peripheral vision. You want to keep that elbow slightly in front of the side seam. Remember, you're going to get tired here. This is towards, we're at the end, right? We've got one more move after this. So that right arm may feel really done at this point, right? Different order of movement. Same movement on both sides, but different order, okay? Bicep curl and land. Now we're going to change what we're doing on your next one. You're going to hold that bicep curl, and the next time you leave, you're going to move the bicep curl in front of the body and open it back up to land. In front of the body open it to land. Good. In front, chest fly open. In front, chest fly open. Good. Inhale, leave. Exhale, land for four. Leave and land for three. Leave. Exhale, last two. You've got this. My right arm is super tired too. <laughs> leave and land now. Extend your right arm all the way out, but you are staying on the jump board now. Left arm comes to the front of the body. Relax your shoulders and pulse that left elbow up. Up and down one inch. Just nice and controlled. Good. Your right arm is extended. You're still sitting tall. The belly button's pulled up and back for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and bring it all the way in. Oh my gosh, no more weights. Throw your weight down, throw it away. Leave your extra light spring on. We are coming into our last and final movement. It's a plank. <laughs> it's a plank. I like planks. I'm a plank lover. Okay, hands on the frame. Your hands are going on your frame for this one since we have that jump board up there on the platform. Your toes are going to the back corners of your carriage. I want you to situate your plank so that your shoulder is in line with your wrist, okay? My arms are wider than my shoulders because we're on the frame, and my feet are wider than my hips because they're at the corners of the carriage. So I want you to hold this little X. I want you to think about that balloon that you inflate under your belly button, right? It doesn't allow you to collapse because we want to keep that low back nice and long. Can you broaden your collarbone a little bit more and keep those elbows soft? We're going to go for a small mini push-up. So those elbows are going to go wide as your collarbone chases your elbows, and then we inhale to press. That balloon under our belly button uh, floats us up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, press. Good. Exhale, bend. It's halfway. And press. Good. You've got four more. Bend and press. This is the grand finale, right? It shouldn't be easy. All right. I want it to be challenging. Last two. Bend and press. Last one. You're going to hold this one in your mini push. You're here for six, for five, for four, for three. Last two. Press it up and knees down, guys. Take a child's pose. Oh my goodness, sit back into your hips. Let those arms extend over the frame. Breathe, catch your breath. Push-ups always elevate that heart rate, right? Every time. Every time. <laughs> Good, you guys. Whew. All right, now when you're ready, you're going to come into a four-point kneel. Stay rear-facing. You're facing the back of your machine, okay? Knees under hips, wrists generally under your shoulders. You know, find that nice quadruped position. You're going to take your right arm, and we're going to thread the needle. That right arm, palm up, is going to lace through the window on the left. So between the left thigh and the left forearm, you want to take that right arm right through. OK, now I'm going to guide my head right between my shoulder blocks so that I can reach my right shoulder towards the carriage. And just hold that stretch through the shoulder girdle, right through the right line of the body, that um, right waistline and rib basket. Feel that nice stretch for four. Last three. <sighs> Last two. Come all the way back through center. Right hand generally under the shoulder. Left hand, palm up. Lace it through that window on the right, right between that right forearm and right thigh, guiding my head between my shoulder blocks. You could always do this on the floor, too, if you'd rather, if you want to get really, really deep. 
okay, reaching that left shoulder towards the carriage. You're here, my sitting bones are reaching up and back for four, for three, last two. Good, coming all the way back up through center. We're gonna end this all with a cat cow, keeping that quadruped position on your exhale. You're gonna nod your chin round your spine, drawing the center of the thoracic spine up towards the ceiling. The tailbone curls under the pelvis, and then we go the other way. We inhale, let the tailbone wag up, let the chin look up. Two more times, exhale, nod the chin, curl, reach that thoracic spine towards the ceiling, kind of like a puppet string right on the center of the back. And then inhale, gently look up and wag that tail. Last one, exhale, nod the chin, curl the tailbone. Inhale, release and go the other way. Come back to your flat back. Guys, you're all done. Woo wee, nice job. That was, that was perfect, I thought. <laughs> no, just kidding, I'm not gonna toot my own horn. But I like, I like the flow on that one. You got a, a really good amount, full body, upper, lower, core connection the entire time, guys. So I wanna know what you think. You better tell me what you think because that's what help guides all the rest of the workouts, <laughs> right? I'm happy to be back with you guys in our new space. It's just going to get better from here on out. I'm super excited about all the stuff we've got planned and coming at you. Um, and I know I've said it before that there's going to be more YouTube workouts. There truly is. That is the plan. So we're going for it. And all different lengths. So you guys got to let me know what your sweet spot is. Is it 60 minutes? Is it 45? Is it a half hour? Do you like some 20 minute burners? Let me know. I do know you want more stretching videos and those are coming your way too. All right, you guys, you can reach out to me on social media, Jess P. Fit on both Instagram and Facebook. However, I have a live website that you can also contact me on if you go to JessPFit.com. All of it is right there, including a contact button on every page, which will send me a direct email, and I will answer you directly. So just let me, that's the best way to get in contact with me. On my website, you can find my on-demand channels for more reformer workouts that are not on YouTube. There's over 100 workouts there on the Reformer and on the mat. So if you are a mat Pilates person as well, there is a ton on my on-demand channel. Two different on-demand cha on -demand channels, mat Pilates and Reformer Pilates, so make sure you click the one you want. Once you are led to that channel, they'll give you a little overview of what the class is about and any props you need, and you can click that purchase button right there, and then it is yours to keep forever. It is on a Vimeo platform right now. However, that might be changing, but right now it is on Vimeo. Guys, have a wonderful day. It is Monday today for me, so we um, got a lot more still to do today, but I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.